Thank you, Alaska and Cora. Minister, as you are very aware, the programme for government of 2020 commits to the introduction of a total contributions approach, aligning a person's contributed pension more closely with the contributions they make. This will include a provision for credit contributions, ensuring that people who take time off work to care for loved ones are not disadvantaged. Perhaps you would be able to outline to the House Minister the progress to date in dealing with this particular issue and making good the commitment made in the programme for government. Yes, Count Corla, and thank you, Deputy Smith, for raising this. Currently, all applicants for the state pension contributory have their entitlement assessed under the yearly average method and the interim total contributions approach, receiving the payment that is most beneficial to them. The yearly average method has been in place since the introduction of the contributory pension in 1961 and calculates the average number of social insurance contributions per year, with payments made on a banded basis. Up to 20 years disregards can be applied under the homemaker scheme, however it can result in anomalies. The interim total contributions approach was introduced in January 2018. It simply adds paid and credited contributions together. 2,080 contributions, that's the equivalent to 40 years, are required for a full rate payment with pro rata payments for those who have the minimum required 520 paid contributions, but less than 2,080. Up to 20 years of home caring periods can be claimed for time spent providing full-time care to children under 12 or people aged over 12 who require an increased level of full-time care. One of the landmark reforms to the state pension system I announced last September is a 10-year phase transition to the total contributions approach and the abolition of the yearly average method. This fairer system will calculate pension payments based on the number of social insurance contributions made by a person over his or her working life, with significant pension credits granted to people who have taken time out of the workplace for caring responsibilities. During a transition period, individual pension rates will be based on the best of the total contributions approach or a rate based on a mix of the yearly average and total contributions. Approaches with the proportion accounted for by yearly average reducing from 90% to zero over 10 years and the proportion uh, accounted for by the total contributions approach increasing commensurately. Officials in my department are currently working on the legislation and systems to support the introduction of this change, which will be effective from 2024. And I hope this clarifies the matter, Deputy. Um, thank, you, thank you, Minister. I welcome that, um, the progress that you have outlined, um, because we all remember at the back, I think it was in 2012, there were some changes at that time to the method of calculation that caused a lot of difficulties for people who had worked for more than 10 years full time, but then who had been employed in, who had an insurance contribution going back many years previously. I came across one case of a young person who came to Dublin, worked in a pub for two weeks as a, seven, a 17 or 18 year old, went to England, had no insurance contribution, then paid um, contributions for more than 20 years. When that person applied for a pension, it went back near 40 years or more, and he had a very poor average contribution. He never knew that the publican that he, he got work experience with for two weeks in Dublin, who was a neighbour and a family friend, and it deprived him of a, of a decent pension. You know, it was a total anomaly, and thankfully that's been ironed out. Minister, the phraseology I saw used before was the total set of con contributions. And are you saying now that the total contribution model, that that's more or less finalised within the department? The, we, we're going to move to the total contributions approach because I think it's a fairer approach, Deputy, because that means you get back what you paid in. So it'll be over a 10-year period, so it'll be gradually because we don't want to disenfranchise some people and when you, when you change things, there's always those that are better off and maybe those that aren't just as well off, but we're going to do it very gradually over a 10-year period uh, and it'll apply to, um, you know, from, from the beginning of January. I'm currently bringing through the legislation to make the changes uh, for the pension reforms that I announced last year. And as part of that, I'll also be bringing forward uh, the, the, the pension um, uh, for the long-term carers, and I know you mentioned that earlier uh, with me. So that means that 
the state enhanced pension provision for long-term carers that's in excess of 20 years will be introduced from January 2024. So that's going to bring, mean that those people who, especially, uh, I suppose, a lot of women gave up their job and have been caring for a, a, maybe a child with a disability, they've been doing that all their life, and then they found that they weren't entitled to a pension. So that will allow, over you, 20, over, allow them um, contributions for the time that they have spent caring. Sorry, thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. It's very important that those people who, who are home caring or who had, to, who had to go out of the workforce, that they, they get the relevant credits. Minister, this is a separate question, but it was an issue that arose some years ago when I raised one of your predecessors. Farmers who had been on farm assist, and then they might have a good year, and they go off farm assist, and they weren't uh, then through the fault of the department and of revenue and of their accountants, they were not alerted to the fact that they needed to be putting on a stamp themselves. You would have had some of the cases yourself, Minister, in the constituents, and I had them, of those people who were affected who had been in receipt of pharmacies. Maybe you could check and get the department to drop me a note if those particular issues have been addressed. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm well aware of, of the case that uh, Deputy Smith, or cases, and, and also Deputy Staunton has raised. Uh, you know, you think you go to your accountant, especially if you're a self-employed farmer, and you think you're getting advice, but sometimes you're not getting great advice, because if you don't have to pay tax that year, some of them didn't pay their PRSI, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, when you do reach uh, retirement age and you discover that there are gaps in your social welfare contributions, uh, you can make an application to, to look at uh, making up the payments, but I think that only goes back for the previous five years, as far as I understand it. And I know, Deputy Smith, you raised this with me before. I did ask my officials to look at it. Uh, and uh, I, I, if it had been good news now, I'd have been back to you very quickly. But uh, I think it was just not, it wasn't just quite as simple as straightforward. Look, I, I look at it again. I'm regularly seeing this situation. If there's one message to go out from this house this evening. For those people who find that they don't have to pay tax for whatever reason, please make sure you pay your PRSI contribution because you need it. And that's for self-implied. So thank you.